In this video, I will show you how to solve a variety of problems using the trig functions sine, cosine, and tangent. So it's important that you have these definitions memorized. They all depend on a right triangle. Uh, now, if you have a right triangle, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. These other two terms, opposite and adjacent, depend on the angle that you're talking about. So imagine that we choose this angle right here marked with a theta. The adjacent leg is the one that's right next to theta, and the opposite leg is the one that is across from theta. So with that in mind, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. This is summarized by the magic word Sokotoa, where uh, the circled parts of that word here, um, the so means sine is opposite over hypotenuse, ka, cosine, is adjacent over hypotenuse, and toa, tangent, is opposite over adjacent. That will help you remember. So for problem number one, we have a triangle shown, and we are supposed to find sine of u. We're not looking for the value of angle u, just the sine of u. So we will simply employ the definition. Um, so because we're talking about angle u, all right, let's circle angle u. Um, so here's the hypotenuse. And uh, across from angle u will be the opposite leg. Right next to angle u will be adjacent. Now, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 30 over 34. But this can be reduced. Both of these are divisible by 2, so that's going to be 15 over 17. So that's going to be A. All right, problem number two. What is the tangent of S? Well, this is the hypotenuse. And if we're talking about angle S, let's circle angle S. Across from angle S, you will find the opposite leg. And the other leg that's close to angle S is adjacent. Now, tangent, um, abbreviated, the uh, definition is abbreviated TOA, that is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be 16 over 30. Um, these are both divisible by 2. That would be 8 over 15. And that is going to be B. OK, P and Q are complementary angles. That just means they add up to 90. Uh, it also means they could be two angles inside of a right triangle. So for example, um, this could be P and this could be Q, for example. Two angles, two acute angles in a right triangle will always be complementary. Anyway, um, we know that tangent is 5 over 8, which must be true. Um, well, this is actually a, uh, a pattern that we've memorized. If we have two complementary angles, all right, uh, if the tangent of one of the angles is 5 over 8, then the tangent of the other angle is going to be 8 over 5. All right, um, the tangent of one angle and the tangent of the other angle will always be reciprocals of each other. All right, so the thing that must be true is tangent Q equals 8 over 5. Tangent Q equals 8 over 5. Boom! That's going to be B. Okay, which of the following is equal to um, cosine of 15? So, a similar rule as we just discussed in problem number 3. Uh, if you have two complementary angles, um, I'm going to borrow the P and Q from the previous problem, just as an example. The sine of one angle is going to always equal the cosine 
of the other angle if they're complementary. Or we could say the cosine of one angle is always going to equal the sine of the other angle. Okay, so they have to be complementary though. So in this case, we don't have P and Q. They gave us uh, 15. And now, because we have a number, we could calculate what the other angle has to be. Uh, if they're going to be complementary, they have to add up to 90. So if we do 90 minus 15, that gives us 75. All right, that's why they keep mentioning 15 and 75 among the answer choices. Uh, if we were going to be more challenging, I would have given you random different kinds of numbers in here. Um, and, uh, but I didn't, so obviously it's almost like a P and a Q. Anyway, um, the cosine of one angle should equal the sine of the other angle, just as we discussed. So the other thing that uh, must equal this is a sine of 75. So the answer is going to be C. All right, now, even if you did not remember that property, as you should, you had a calculator. So um, I always want you to use different strategies. Um, you know, what if you're taking a standardized test and you forgot the rule? This is a problem you should have been able to solve even if you uh, never learned the rule. Because you can use your calculator to evaluate uh, the cosine of 15. All right, it's given us this weird expression. Um, by the way, if you do a cosine or a square root and you get some st strange expression, if you want a decimal, you can just hit this button and it will give you the decimal. So uh, I'll look at it this way, 0.9659. Okay, so for example, if I tried sine 15 or tangent 15, okay, sine 15, nope, how about tangent 15? Nope, and then I would have gotten to sine 75. Oh look, 0 .6, uh, 0.9659. That's just what we got when, when we did cosine 15. So um, we, we could have uh, figured out the answer using a calculator. All right, solve this equation. Well, solving trig equations just depends on where the variable is. When the variable is in the denominator, um, this is when you swap these and you're going to get x is equal to 4 over sine 42. And you can just put that in your calculator. Okay, and that's 5.978. Got to round up. 5.978. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to do letters. Let's see. 5.978 is right here. So I'm supposed to be doing this multiple choice thing. So I need to say D instead. All right, that was number five. Okay, now let's, let me leave this on the screen to compare. So when the X was in the denominator, that's when you swap. When the X is inside the trig function like this, that's when you do the inverse. So here's where you go x equals inverse tangent of 15 over 4. Okay, and again you just put that in your calculator. So inverse tangent, that's second tangent 15 over 4. Okay, that's 75.069. Boom, that's D. Let 
moving on. Okay, look, by the way, just for the sake of completeness, so when the variable was in the denominator, that's when you do the swap. When the variable is inside the trig function, that's when you do the inverse trig function. The only other type of problem that there is, is um, say if it had been like this, cosine of 15 is equal to x over 4. When the variable is in the numerator, that's when you multiply both sides by the denominator. All right, this would be when I would multiply both sides by 4, and I would get this. And then I could just put this in my calculator. So I'm sure that will occur later in this uh, program. All right, number 7, label the sides of this triangle to show tangent of E equals 16 over 5. So we're talking about angle E, so I'm going to go ahead and circle that angle. Now remember, uh, the tangent equation, the tangent definition, is abbreviated TOA to remind us that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that means the 16 must be opposite and the 5 must be adjacent. Okay, now of course this is the hypotenuse um, and the side across from E is going to be the opposite side and the side right next to angle E is going to be the adjacent side. So now we have it all labeled. Okay, but we just decided that 16 was the opposite leg. So that's going to go here. This will be 16. 5 must be the adjacent leg. So that goes right here, as we already said. So we've labeled that. Um, but there's more. Then find and label the third side of the triangle. Round to three decimal places if necessary. So we need to find the third side. We need to find the hypotenuse. So when you have two sides given and you're looking for the third side, that's what the Pythagorean theorem is for. Okay, just for your education, because whenever this comes up and I ask, hey class, how do we find the third side? Um, it's embarrassing all the things that students start mumbling. They're, they're trying to say Pythagorean theorem, um, but they just don't really know what the words are. So maybe if you see it written out. All right, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, get educated. Be able to say these words. Pythagorean theorem. Anyway, it goes like this. Leg squared plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So the 5 and the 16 are both legs, and of course this is the hypotenuse. We're looking for the hypotenuse in this case. You know, so like imagine this was x, because that's what we're trying to find. Then we might say 5 squared plus 16 squared is equal to x squared. So we're looking for the hypotenuse. But this is going to be 25 plus, uh, I'm not sure what 16 squared is. All right, 256. I should add that to my memorization patterns. Okay, so if you add those up, you get 281. Now, if you want to get um, x by itself, you're going to have to take the square root of both sides. So that's going to give you uh, square root of 281. Um, it's giving me that back again because it doesn't simplify, but I'll hit this for the decimal. So that is 16.763. Okay, that is the hypotenuse. All right, I guess I'm just supposed to, it says find and label, so I'll just, I'll just put it in the picture. Okay, Pythagorean theorem, pi, thag, Orion. Anyways, 
Oh, by the way, uh, maybe I'll next time I write it. Because another one is hypotenuse. I mean, we keep saying this all the time. Here it is. You know, we abbreviate the HYP, but when I ask a student to say it, man, it just is so rare a student can actually say the word. And as a teacher, I'm embarrassed because, uh, you know, I'm helping to produce these kids who can't say hypotenuse. Look at it. Look at how it's spelled. Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. You can do it. Next time you're called on, proudly, boldly, say hypotenuse. I, I believe in you. You can do it. Anyway, find the side length mark X. Okay, let's go through our five-step process. When we're solving uh, a triangle using, um, you know, SOHCAHTOA, using our sine, cosine, and tangent. What you want to do is circle the angle, and you want to label all the sides. So this is the hypotenuse. Across from the angle that you circled is always going to be the opposite leg. Right next to the angle is going to be the adjacent leg. All right, and then you're going to have to decide. Are you going to use, you know, I'm writing SOHCAHTOA. And I will use this to help me decide, am I going to use sine, cosine, or tangent? All right, but first I decide which one of these three sides is not helping me. Um, the opposite side is not doing anything. The hypotenuse, that's the x. That's the variable that I'm looking for. The adjacent side it gives me a value. It gives me 13. The opposite leg is doing nothing. Um, so sine and tangent both involve the opposite leg. So I'm not going to be able to use those because the opposite leg is useless. So that leaves cosine. And this reminds me that the cosine is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So you write cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. Now, when the variable is in the denominator, this is when you swap these. So you're going to have x is equal to 13 over cosine 41. OK? Um, and then you just put that in your calculator. Okay, 17.225. All right, number nine. All right, so here again, we're just going to follow the, the five steps. Step one, circle the angle. Step two, label the sides. This is the hypotenuse. Um, across from the angle you circled is always the opposite leg. Right next to the angle that you circled is the adjacent leg. All right. Um, step three is to decide between so, ka, and toa, sine, cosine, or tangent. And the way you decide is which one of these. Uh, sides is doing nothing. It's adjacent. We're not looking for it and it's not one of a given value. So um, cosine and tangent both involve adjacent so throw that out. Alright. Um, step four, set up the appropriate trig function. So we decided we're going to use sine. So we do sine of 56 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, that's x over 8. Okay, here we go. Um, so step 5 is to solve this. When the variable is in the top, the numerator, that's when you multiply both sides by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. Okay, um, that leaves x by itself. So I can simply put this in my calculator. So 8 sine 
56. So that is 6.632. Okay, find the angle uh, marked X. Round your answer to three decimal places. So here we go again. First, circle the angle that you're going to use. Of course, we're going to use this angle because that's what we're looking for. Next, label all the sides. So this is the hypotenuse. Across from the angle you circled will be the opposite leg. Right next to the angle you circled will be the adjacent leg. Now we must choose between sine, cosine, and tangent. Which of these sides is not helping us? The hypotenuse is not doing anything. We're not looking for it, and it's not a given value. So sine and cosine both involve hypotenuse. So I'm going to throw out both of those. That leaves tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. So I will write tangent of the angle I circled is equal to opposite over adjacent. Again, when the variable is inside the trig function, this is when you do the inverse trig function. So we will do x is equal to the inverse tangent of 16 over 11. And this is something we can simply put in the calculator. So inverse tangent. So we have to hit second tangent. And then we can write 16 over 11. 11. So that is 55.491. Alright, for the next three problems we're going to use the same picture over and over again. So the best thing to do is to do one problem at a time. Whatever they ask us to find, I'm going to put an X on that. And when I'm done with that problem, I'm going to erase all my labeling and start over. So for problem number 11, they say find length of side KL. So here's K, here, here's L, here's side KL. So we're looking for this side, so I'm going to mark it with an X. So now it's just like all the other problems that I've done, the last uh, like four problems. So um, I almost started to uh, try to circle the angle that I'm going to use. But this is the case. Um, remember a, a while ago I was trying to get you to learn how to say Pythagorean theorem. Um, why were we using the Pythagorean theorem? We had two given sides and we were looking for the third side. That's when you use the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and look, that's what we have now. All right, we have two sides and we're looking for the third side. So once again, we're going to do the Pythagorean theorem, which says leg squared plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So the important thing is that the hypotenuse, the 22, all right, this is the hypotenuse, um, has to end up on the side of the equation by itself. So this is going to be like 9 squared plus x squared is equal to 22 squared, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, but this is 81 plus x squared is equal to 22 squared, 484. Um, and then we will subtract 81 from both sides. So that's going to leave x squared is equal to 403. Um, and then we have to take the square root of both sides. Okay, if I take the square root, then that's going to give me the final answer. Right, square root of 403. All right.
right? That is 20.075. All right, so problem number 11 is over, and there's my final answer. Uh, now, as I said, before I go on to the next problem, I'm going to erase all this uh, because I have to wait and see what they're going to ask me for this time. For problem number 12, they want me to find the measure of angle K. Okay, um, so I probably won't need this anymore. So I'm supposed to find the measure of angle K. So here is angle K over here. So this is what I'm supposed to find, so I'm going to put my x there. This time, I am going to wind up using sine, cosine, or tangent. So I'm going to do what I always do, circle the angle, label the sides. This is the hypotenuse. Across from the angle you circle is the opposite leg. Right next to the angle you circle is the adjacent leg. Now, think about Sokotoa. All right, sine, cosine, and tangent. Which one of these, um, which one of these three sides is not doing anything? Well, I've got the uh, the hypotenuse is 22. The opposite side is 9. The adjacent side is doing nothing. So cosine and tangent both involve the adjacent side. So I'm going to throw those out. That leaves sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So I will say sine of the angle I circled, which is x, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, 9 over 22. When the angle is inside the function, this is when you do the inverse trig function. So x is equal to inverse sine of 9 over 22. And you can just put that in your calculator. So inverse sine of 9 over 22. All right, that's 24.148. Got to round up, 24.148. All right, for number 13, we are supposed to find the measure of angle M. Okay, so I've erased everything on the picture. This time, we're supposed to find the measure of angle M. So I'm going to put my X right here. So I'm going to just go through my steps real quick. Circle the angle. Label the sides. This is the hypotenuse. Across from the angle is the opposite leg. Right next to the angle is the adjacent leg. I will contemplate Sokotoa. Which of these sides is doing nothing? The opposite side. There's no number and we're not looking for it. So sine and cos uh, sorry, sine and tangent vo both involve the opposite leg. So I'll throw those out. So that means we will be using cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of x is equal to 9 over 22. Again, when the variable is inside the trig function, we need the inverse trig function. So inverse cosine of 9 over 22. Okay, and we can just put that in the calculator. Inverse cosine of 9 over 22. All right, that is 65.852. Now, it would be irresponsible of me if I did not point out that we just found um, one of the acute angles in the right triangle, and then we found the other 
angle inside the same triangle. We did not need to use cosine to find the second angle. Um, once we found angle K, we can just subtract that from 90, and that will get you angle M. So it would have been a little bit faster. All right, so we found angle K was 24.148. So I could have done 90 minus 24. Point one four eight. Okay, and that's going to get you 65.852, which is exactly what we got using cosine. Now, the one advantage of doing it, you know, uh, taking a couple more steps and using cosine is uh, what if you made a mistake on problem number 12? If you did, then you're going to automatically get number 13 wrong. Uh, but if you use cosine and do uh, problem number 13 from, from the beginning, then uh, even if you got problem number 12 wrong, you might still get problem number 13 right. So that's why um, if you have the time, I just recommend using the trig function rather than just subtracting from 90. Okay, but you should know that. Anyway, last problem. Find the length of the sides marked X and Y. When you have two triangles that are stuck together like this, the best thing to do is to redraw them so that they are separate. Okay, so um, consider the triangle on the left. Okay, so we've got the 54 and this is 17, and this is x. Okay, now consider the triangle on the right. Okay, where this is 49, and uh, this is also x, all right? It's the same for both, it's a shared side. And then this is y. Okay, now, Right now, there's only one of these triangles that we could solve, the one on the left. See how it has more numbers and only has one variable? Um, this one has two variables and only one number. That's, uh, that one number is not enough to uh, solve sine, cosine, or tangent. You need two numbers and then the variable. So we really have to solve the triangle on the left first, and then we will use that value to solve the triangle on the right. So let's go ahead and do what we do. You circle the angle and label the sides. So this is the hypotenuse across from the angle. That's the opposite leg. Right next to the angle is the adjacent leg. Contemplate so -ka toa Which of these sides is doing nothing? The adjacent side. It's not given to us, and we're not looking for it. Cosine and tangent both involve adjacent, so we will throw those out. That means we're going to use sine. So we, we will write sine of the angle that we circled is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be x over 17. When the variable is in the numerator, that's when you multiply both sides by the denominator. All right, so these are going to cancel each other out. And um, this is something I can put in my calculator. 17 sine 54. So that's Okay, so now it's time to find y. But the only way we're going to find y is if we use the x value that we just found. All right, so we now know that x is equal to 13.753. So now I can go ahead and solve the triangle on the right using the normal strategy. 
circle the angle, label the sides, all right, hypotenuse, all right, across from the angle that you circled will be the opposite leg. Right next to the angle you circled will be the adjacent leg. Okay, which one of these sides, wait, I forgot to write down Sokotillit. Sine, cosine, tangent. Okay, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Anyways, um, which one of these three sides is not doing anything? The opposite side is not doing anything. All right, it's not one of the variables we're looking for, and it's not a value that we are given. So sine and tangent both involve the opposite leg. So I'm going to throw those out. That means I will be using cosine today. So cosine of the angle that you circled equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, that adjacent leg is this 13... 0.753 and the hypotenuse is y. When the variable is in the denominator that's when you swap these two. So I'm going to end up with y equals 13.753 over cosine 49. All right, and that's just something I can put in my calculator. Thirteen point seven five three over cosine forty nine. Twenty point nine six three. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.